welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. My name is Sammy and on this channel we do DIYs, upcycles, wood signs, and there's always tons of laughter. Today I am going to be bringing you some fall decor. I also wanted to thank Cricut for sponsoring today's video and with that said let's go ahead and get right into this video. Okay so for our first do-it-yourself project we're using these glass jars from Dollar Tree. I did spray paint them with a coat of clear rust-oleum spray. And then I'm using these DIY paints that were sent to me by Upcycled by Brie, and I am so excited to use them and to share my thoughts on them. So channeling my inner Brie, she always says to put the paint in a different like container so you're not contaminating your jar. So that is what I do here. I'm just taking a chippy brush, and y'all, this paint is so thick. It is a clay-based paint. So we use the chalk paint, or at least I think I do, or we do, because of the matte finish it gives, which I love. Well, this right here, this clay base paint gives you like a true matte finish. I can't wait for you guys to see it. So anywho, I'm going to go ahead and do two coats of this paint, which is farm fresh, and then also the cake batter. So I'm gonna show you a clip right here. As it starts drying, the color actually lightens up substantially. So right here, look at this. It is so beautiful. And keep in mind, if you wanted it darker, you could add a wax to it and it'll darken up the color as well. So now here's cake batter. Cake batter is like a gorgeous, buttery, sunshine yellow. I loved it. These are officially my fall colors for sure. So there we go. Sorry, I don't know why that clip was like that, but that's how it looks as it starts drying down. Then as those, oh, sorry. Now just showing you, this is the second coat of paint. And y'all, I had no problems with the paint, the like first layer lifting up, which always happens using Waverly. And then for the top of our jars, I'm painting them with Truffle by Waverly. I also sprayed these with clear, um, spray by rust-oleum that way we don't have that streakiness that tends to happen when you're painting over metal it gives something for the paint to bond to so we're going to cover all three yes three i ended up painting another jar orange and then once we are done with that we are going to use our white wax so she sent me brie also sent me the diy wax and you all know i just found wax for the first time like a week ago and i'm obsessed with it this product is like a whipped buttery i don't know how to explain it it's so soft it is a bright true white and uh she had suggested just using a good old-fashioned chippy brush to apply this she also suggested to work in smaller sections so i listened to her and i can't wait to show you the look you're gonna get so i started in smaller sections brushing it on then using a paper towel, which I think you're supposed to use a lint-free cloth, but eh. okay. So you can see right here, it gives you like this frosty look. You can see all of those, that texture coming through it, or you can even do kind of like a dry brush with this wax as well. And y'all, this is, um, if you've ever used the Waverly wax, the Waverly wax is very liquidy. This is not like that at all. It is like I said, fluffy, kind of a buttery texture. And I love the way it came out. It didn't feel greasy or anything. And for a smaller project like this, it dried very, very fast. And oh, I did want to point out, I after I was done painting these, I did spray them with a clear coat of Rust-Oleum as well. Um, so after I'm done with that one, I'm going to do the same thing with the... Um, cake batter one and then also the orange one that I ended up making as well. So I just did the same thing for the lid, waxed it, wiped it down. Now we're going to add our accessories to this. So I am going to take a little branch. These are from Dollar Tree. My thick star bond adhesive. This works perfect with metal. I wasn't going to chance hot glue because I didn't know if I wanted to keep it yet or if I wanted to put it in my booth. So I also grabbed some Spanish moss. I'm gonna get some hot glue. We are gonna put some hot glue underneath that, press it down. 
Imagine if you forgot to do this and somebody picked it up like at your booth or wherever and just everything fell off. Embarrassing. All right, so I finished that up. Now I'm gonna take some um, raffia and we're gonna make a finger bow. I don't think I've ever made a finger bow with raffia, but it worked just as it should. I will leave the link for you down in my description box of my bow tutorial. Y'all, once you figure out how to do a finger bow, uh, it, it just is an easy bow. It's a great addition to add a little bit of detail and I love how it turned out. So I'm gonna do the same accessories for all of the pumpkins. I just hot glued that to the base of our stem and look at how beautiful these turned out. These are my colors for sure. We have our traditional orange, that's pumpkin by Waverly by the way. And then we have this beautiful cake batter yellow and our farm fresh. I love the way these turned out. Let me know what you think down in the comments. All right, that was the first DIY, you guys, and I hope you enjoyed it. I am totally digging these DIY paints. I love the like clay, like super matte finish that they have, the coverage, everything. Like I said, um, I will leave Bree's website down below so you could check out all the colors that they have to offer, all the different waxes and all of that stuff. And you guys, I hope you enjoy these fall decor ideas. I hope you're vibing them. I hope you're feeling this fall spirit. And you guys, I know it's summer. I know it is, I know. But we're one season ahead, just like the retail stores. I feel like I have to keep on reminding you guys that. So just keep these in mind so that when you do go to make fall decor, you know what to get. You can pick up items right now at the store. You could be looking at your thrift stores or your Facebook marketplace. So just keep that in mind. And y'all know the drill. If you're digging me, if you're digging the DIYs, if you're digging this channel, please make sure to like and subscribe. And with that said, let's go ahead and get back into these decor ideas. Okay, this next one is 110% inspired by Julie's signs and designs. Hashtag Avi because I've been binge watching her. Okay, so you guys, this, it, all of this was, well, all of the wood was free, found it on the side of the road from Facebook Marketplace. Spindles I found at the market where my booth is. And you guys, oh, this came out so amazing. So these are, the, the sizes are going to depend on your spindle size. So keep that in mind. I can leave you the measurements, but it's going to depend on whatever spindle you choose to use. So right here, if you see the piece of wood that's closest to you, that's going to be our bottom. And I measured that against the spindle I'm going to be using to determine the size of my spindle box. So me making wood signs, I feel like there was like a way to do this almost like making a sign. But then I ended up going back to how Julie showed how she did it in the video, which was saving the bottom of the box for last. So do you see, I really had to think about that. So I have the sides up and then I'm going to panel these sides because this is like barn wood fencing. It was really thin. So I had to double it up. Now you can see I'm using my nail gun. I forgot to put wood glue on these. So I will do that in the future. And y'all, if you are afraid of power tools, do not be learn how to use them correctly. And I promise they will take your projects to the next level. I can't say that enough. They're worth trying to learn how to use. So you can see, I just attached those to the side. It's already coming together. If you guys want a full tutorial on like how I cut this, sized it, please let me know and I can do that because I will definitely be making more of these in the future. And um, I, I love, love, love this. Thank you, Julie, so much for the inspiration. Um, she's just so full of so many ideas. I'll leave her link down in the description box for you guys so you can check out her channel. Okay, so we got the bottom in there and it fits almost perfectly. It's a little wiggly, but that's okay because you can always change out your nails to be longer, which I didn't have to do. So I just nailed those on each side. Now we're gonna take our spindle. Now this is where it's like your measurements aren't always right because I measured the bottom 
based off the spindle, yet the spindle didn't fit in there. So I had to take it to the garage, cut it down just a little bit. Look at how beautiful that spindle is. So your girl, Julie, is cray cray, and she uses like these thin spindles and shoots nails through them, and I was too scared to do that. So I chose the spindle because of its thickness. I thought I would have more of, um, what was I gonna say? What was I gonna say? More of a chance of hitting the nail in the spindle if it was thicker. So as you can see, it like went in there exactly where I needed it to. I'm gonna take this nail gun. I am so scared right now. Did you see my face? I was like, ah, oh, it didn't go through the wood, yay. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the opposite side. I'm gonna put a few more nails in there just to make sure it's nice and secure. And I, do you see that? I'm like, yay. Okay. So now I'm taking some floral, floral foam by Dollar Tree. I am not going to hot glue these to the bottom. And I chose to do it that way because whether I choose to keep it or sell it, I wanted people to have the option of taking the foam out if they wanted to put glass jars in there or roll up some, you know, like washcloths or whatever it may be, they would have that option to change it up according to their decor. So I am putting three blocks in here. I'm gonna be taking picks from Dollar Tree, which were la from last year. And then these, I think they called them mixed berry like bundles from Walmart. Y'all don't skip out on Walmart for florals because they're very affordable and I think they're great. Meet my ladybug. Uh, you can find her on my Amazon link down in the description box. Her name's Vivian. I don't know, I just made that up right now. I think because Everly said her baby doll's new name was Vivian. Okay, Vivian reminds me of Pretty Woman. Okay, anyways, now we're gonna play around with it. This is what's fun about florals is nothing is permanent with floral foam. So you can take it out, you can move it around. I chose to do these, put these picks in here. I actually take off those leaves because they definitely don't go with the greenery. And um, I used, like, like I said, two of the bundles from Walmart and then three of the picks from Dollar Tree. I love these neutrals with the barn wood and y'all check out how this came out. I, I love this. I love the natural wood color. I love that there's a story to it. There's character. I love the neutrals because, I mean, you can just take out those picks and change them accordingly. So let me know if you're gonna try to make this and love it. All right, you guys, our next project, I'm using two barnwood pieces. Again, free, I stock Facebook Marketplace looking for free wood to pick up, so utilize it. So you guys, I'm gonna show you on my Cricut, um, my maker, how to slice in your design studio. So let's go over to our Cricut machine and here we go. So I already picked out a pumpkin from the design access. I typed out my word. I'm going to put it over my pumpkin. Now I'm going to highlight the pumpkin and the text. We're going to go over to slice on the bottom right. And now your word is going to be cut out of your pumpkin. So you erase your word. We don't need that. Now you'll see when I put it against the black, now when this cuts, you could either weed out thankful and all the dots, or we can weed out the pumpkin, which is what I do, and leave the dots and the text. So I'm gonna show you that one more time, starting from me typing this out. Okay, so right here we have our pumpkin. We're typing out blessed. Now Cricut has gone a lot better because before, remember, you had to completely piece the cursive together. Now a lot of the, um, the fonts come and you don't have to move them around. This one, I wanted to move them just a tad bit closer. So I ungrouped them, moved them where I wanted, highlighted, grouped them together, then welded. Now I'm going to move this back over my pumpkin. I already have the pumpkin to the size I want. Place your letters or your word. We're gonna highlight this, highlight the all of it, and we are going to press that slice button again. And here we go. Now we have it cut out of our pumpkins. We are gonna go ahead and cut that with our Maker Cricut machine. And now we will bring it back over to our wood. 
So for this project, I am using permanent vinyl. The reason I'm using permanent it is it has a strong adhesive. And when I am using this barn wood, it is super textured. It still is dirty no matter if I sanded and cleaned it or not. And I knew that it would adhere to this wood without any issues. So that is why I'm using permanent vinyl on this. So we are gonna place our forever and then our pumpkins down. Now you guys, I do have to say, I know not everybody has a machine. I'm gonna link Deidre from the My Upcycled Life. She does a lot of wording on wood and stuff like that. And she shows you all different ways of putting text and stuff like that on um, surfaces without using machines. So I'm gonna link her down below in my description box for you. Um, but I will say, if you are somebody that creates a lot, this is worth having. They go on sale pretty darn often. And um, it just makes my life a lot easier, to be honest, especially since I'm creating every single day to be able to go over to my machine and um, have the option of just picking designs out, being able to cut lettering since my handwriting is not great. It is a great tool to add to your arsenal. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Okay. So anyways, you guys, I am taking my stencil brush from Dollar Tree, stippling on white paint. I'm just doing one layer. Can I just say it bothers me that I did not put blessed in the middle? Like, I don't like that the thankful, grateful, or next, I don't know. Anyways, we are going to take off our vinyl. This came out so good. I mean, there were some bleeds, but come on, this is a textured piece of barn wood. It was going to happen. Um, I'm not going to put you through the uh, pain of watching me lead this because those little dots took me forever. Okay, now we're going to make, take them, make it. We're going to take the wood glue from Dollar Tree. Works just as good as Gorilla Glue, y'all. Yeah, should have started that face down. Then taking some other scrap pieces of wood, I'm going to put those on the side. And then we are going to grab our nail gun again. So you guys, if you don't have a nail gun, if you're making these for yourself, for your home, wood glue, let me tell you, it dries like concrete. It ain't going nowhere. But if you are selling it, I highly recommend that you secure it with a nail gun or just a hammer and nails does the job too. All right, now we're gonna take our twine. I'm gonna double knot that up, staple it to the top of our sign. You could also use sawtooth hangers or D hooks or command strips are an option as well. And that is all for this beautiful Cricut project. And look at, I mean, look at how clean that looks. Come on and rustic. It's a nice neutral. It's going to go with so many people's decor. I'm going to list this in my booth for $26.95 and I got the wood for free. Okay. So this one, you guys, again, just using scrap wood. These were actually the baseboards we used in our master bedroom bathroom. And I just cut the scrap pieces all down to the same size. And after I'm done cleaning it, I am going to put a base coat of hazelnut by Waverly on each and every one of them, the front, the back, the sides. I wanted a brown contrasting color, but I ran out of, um, uh, what is it? Truffle. Truffle it is. All right. So after we're done doing that, we are going to go with uh, our stencils, decals, whatever you wanna call them. And I want to know, this is another reason why I love Cricut because there's no guesswork in it. When I am using my stencil vinyl, all I have to click for materials is stencil vinyl and it does all the work for me. It adjusts the speed, the, the depth of the blade, all of that stuff versus other machines, which you have to figure out the force, the depth, the speed. This is easy peasy and that's what I love about it. I don't have to, you know, work hard to get the machine to work. So anywho, we're going to apply these on here. And the reason I chose to use the Aura Mask stencil vinyl is because we are putting this on top of paint. And if you were to use permanent, you're going to pull that paint up. All right, so now we're gonna try the candle distressing method again. If you guys did not see my cottage core video, I will link that down in the description box for you. Um, so I've never tried this on top of vinyl. You could see I rubbed it all over the place. I applied my paint here. We're gonna do it front, back, sides, all of that goodness. And I just wanted to see how it would work, like just over vinyl. I don't know if that makes sense. 
<laughs> okay, now here's our Farm Fresh. We are going to use the same colors that we've been using, which are now my new fall colors. This is like my fall palette. <laughs> Don't I sound fancy? We all know that I'm not fancy, so we know that's why. Okay, so I wanted to show you the difference in these two colors, the DIY paint versus the Waverly, because the Waverly one, the pumpkins is completely dry, okay? Look at the matte difference in these. Blown away, no comparison, love it. Okay, so as I'm weeding this, you guys, I notice that wherever the candle had hit the vinyl on the sides, it left like a waxy residue. I don't know if you could see it on your screens, but it's kind of like a white film. And I told myself, all right, let's just use our packing tape method first, and then we'll see where we need to go. So for this candle method, you guys, you're putting the candle, applying paint, allowing it to dry, then you're taking your packing tape and then you're gonna put it over, rub it down. Now, wherever that candle wax was, wherever you pull up the tape, that's where your paint is gonna pull up at. So for this one, it did, I don't think I used enough candle wax. If you watch the cottage core video, the frame I did, oh my gosh, beautiful. So here to get rid of that waxy residue, I just used a rough sanding block, went over it, it came right off, looks stunning. So we are gonna do the same thing um, with our, I don't know, I don't know what's next you guys. Okay, here we go. With our Farm Fresh Apple Cider One. And again, using the packing tape, I am taking my scraper tool and just kind of really trying to get down on it. And you'll see, um, what kind of distressing effect it gave this. I wish I could, I should have put in the frame just so you could see the difference. No, go watch the video y'all. Jeez. If you want to go see how it came out, watch the video. All right. So I pulled that off. I do clear all of these with the Rust-Oleum clear matte spray paint. All of my projects I've been using that. Um, and then again, sanding it down and these came out so beautiful. Do you see that? Just that little bit of, you know, rustic touch. I love how all of the colors go together. And you guys, thank you so much for watching this and spending your time with me. Make sure to go to upcycledbybree.com to check out these DIY DIY paints. I definitely think they are worth the investment. And you all know if you're digging me, if you're digging the DIYs, if you're digging this channel, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe and check me out on Instagram and my shop with Sammy channel. Have a good one, you guys. Bye. Okay. <laughs> I'm too old to have pimples and like lipstick coming out this uh, I'm a mess I cannot stand you know back in the day or hey <laughs> it might still be today when you like you would go out with your girlfriends and you would like go to the bar and drink and all that stuff and then like as the night progressed and then you would look in the mirror and then you'd be like actually no you wouldn't you still thought you looked good and then you saw pictures the next day and you were like, whoa, whoa, I look haggard. That's what I feel like every time I get close up in this light. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I thought I was good. I was getting ready, ready with the lights off so Momo could sleep in. Okay. Can I just say that in comments, when people say, I didn't watch this video because I don't have a Cricut, do, do, does not, I mean, you guys, I literally almost use the Cricut like in every video, in every video. I just don't say it's sponsored by Cricut. That's the only difference. Other than that, I, Anytime I use text or anything like that, I use the Cricut. And you guys still watch those videos like, what, what's going on, y'all? Anyways, I'm going to stop talking to myself because really you guys aren't here. Here I go talking about my armpits already, but they're kind of sweaty. Do those. Do those. Do those.
how weird if I had skinny arms. I guess these are meant for a reason, because if I look like that. Okay, focus. Sleeping long days with Momo, huh? Have you been sleeping long days with Momo? She lets me know when Momo needs something, huh? But man, your hair, look, look at that. Like, how'd you sleep last night, girlfriend? Jeez, you got your hair all mad. Look at this, this thing. Look at this thing. Didn't we just get your hair cut too? Huh? Didn't we just get your hair cut? Do you not like the camera? <laughs> Glamour shots by Deb. 